Televisions can be found in billions of homes around the world. But a hundred years ago, nobody even knew what a television was. In fact, as late as 1947, only a few thousand Americans owned televisions. How did such a groundbreaking technology turn from a niche invention to a living room mainstay? Today, we're explaining the complete history of the television. Mechanical televisions in the 1800s and early 1900s. These early televisions started appearing in the early 1800s. They involved mechanically scanning images, then transmitting those images onto a screen. Compared to electronic televisions, they were extremely rudimentary. One of the first mechanical televisions used a rotating disc with holes arranged in a spiral pattern. This device was created independently by two inventors, Scottish inventor John Logie Bard and American inventor Charles Francis Jenkins. Both devices were invented in the early 1920s. The first electronic television was invented in 1927. The world's first electronic television was created by a 21-year-old inventor named Philo Taylor Farnsworth. That inventor lived in a house without electricity until he was 14. Starting in high school, he began to think of a system that could capture moving images, transform those images into code, then move those images along radio waves to different devices. Farnsworth was miles ahead of any mechanical television system invented to date. Farnsworth's system captured moving images using a beam of electrons, basically a primitive camera. How did early televisions work? The two types of televisions that we've discussed already, mechanical and electronic, worked in vastly different ways. We've hinted at how these TVs work before, but we'll go into a more detailed description in this section. Mechanical televisions. Mechanical televisions relied on rotating discs to transmit images from a transmitter to the receiver. Both the transmitter and receiver had rotating discs. The discs had holes in them spaced around the disc, with each hole being slightly lower than the other. To transmit images, you had to place a camera in a totally dark room, then place a very bright light behind the disc. That disc would be turned on by a motor in order to make one revolution for every frame of the TV picture. Bard's early mechanical television had 30 holes and rotated 12.5 times per second. There was a lens in front of the disc to focus light onto the subject. When light hit the subject, that light would be reflected onto the photoelectric cell, which then converted this light energy to electrical impulses. The electrical impulses are transmitted over the air to a receiver. The disc on that receiver would spin at the exact same speed as the disc on the transmitter's camera. The motors would be synchronized to ensure precise transmissions. The receiving end featured a radio receiver, which received the transmissions and connected them to a neon lamp placed behind the disc. The disc would rotate while the lamp would put out light in proportion to the electrical signal it was getting from the receiver. Ultimately, this system would allow you to view the image on the other side of the disc, although you need a magnifying glass. Here's how the system works in diagram form. Electronic televisions. There's a reason we stopped using mechanical televisions. Electronic televisions were vastly superior. Electronic televisions rely on a technology called cathode ray tube, CRT, as well as two or more anodes. The anodes were the positive terminals and the cathode was the negative terminal. The cathode part of the cathode ray tube was a heated filament enclosed in a glass tube, the T of the CRT. The cathode would release a beam of electrics into the empty space of the tube, which was actually a vacuum. All of these released electrons had a negative charge and would thus be attracted to the positively charged anodes. These anodes were found at the end of the CRT, which was the television screen. As the electrons were released at one end, they were displayed on the television screen at the other end. Of course, firing electrons against the glass screen doesn't make images. To make images, the inside of the television screen would be coated with a phosphor. The electrons would paint an image on the screen one line at a time. To control the firing of the electrons, CRTs used two steering coils. 
Both steering coils use the power of magnets to push the electron beam to the desired location on the screen. One steering coil pushes the electrons up or down, while the other pushes them left or right. That wraps up the video. Subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay notified about our uploads. I'll see you next time. Till then, peace out.